Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Klaus and Q Show here live on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus. I'm going to be joined here momentarily by my tag team partner of sorts, my co-host, Quadell Edwards, is here in the building. We have a lot to talk about on this episode. Uh, Q, let's start with you, brother. Like, <laughs> we have to address the elephant. In, in the room, right? I mean, yeah. a, a couple of weeks back, we, we were shocked t to hear that a tragedy had had endured for you, for your family, for other families. Um, of course, we are referring to the, the fire that unfortunately took place in, in the townhouses where you lived. Now, the important part is you are safe, your family is safe, but you know, there's a lot of people that are tuning in here tonight because they know that, that you're gonna be on here and they just wanna you know, see you, they wanna hear you, make sure that you're okay. So how are things with you and your family? I'm still kicking. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to go through, you know, when you're going through a fire, but uh, you know, I just thank God that I'm still here. Uh, those who don't know the story, a fire broke out at my uh, Arbon Hills townhome. I was upstairs asleep when the uh, fire started. I live on one end of the unit, uh, it was six units. I lived on the end. The fire broke out on the opposite end. And uh, I was actually upstairs asleep when the fire was billowing out to the sidewalk. I mean, the fire was pretty much ablaze, pretty bad, you know, when I was upstairs asleep. My wife, she woke me up. She uh, said, we just got we got to evacuate. Mm. So that's the only thing I heard. I got up, didn't grab anything, put shoes on, and walked out the house. So uh, that was it. You know, and the fire start, you know, pretty much consuming the entire building, uh, mainly the top floor. Uh, you know, I just want to definitely give a shout out to the fire department. I mean, they showed up. I think it was like four different departments that actually showed up to put that fire out. It took about an hour, right. a little over an hour to actually put the fire out. But uh, I'm, I'm alive, I'm kicking, I'm well. My children are great. My wife, she's doing great. Uh, we did have insurance. <laughs> Important, make sure you have insurance. Because <laughs> anything can happen. I mean, when I got my renter's insurance, I didn't think I was gonna actually need it. I got it because, you know, People were telling me to get it, so I got it. <laughs> but uh, thank God that I did have it. So, you know, I'm just going to let the insurance company do what they do, and I'm just going to keep on surviving. The one thing, and we talked about this before we, we came on the air here tonight, you and me and Joe were, were, were sitting here talking. Um, the one thing that really stands out, and like Joe's the one that told me about the thing to, to begin with. He sent me a message. He saw you on the news, and when I seen the clip from from the news, I had the same thought that he did. Your demeanor, I mean, <laughs> just minutes, hours after you're watching your home burn, you are incredibly optimistic. I mean, and that's the one thing that really stood out in in the face of tragedy and all this and I mean it could have been so much worse than it was yeah. but here you are you you are you are positive you are optimistic you are upbeat how many times have you turned into the news at some point you see a local story and the people that they are interviewing are just you know a blubbering mess you can't you know there's no composure they're they're all wrapped up in the moment and who wouldn't be you very, I mean, it just speaks volumes of your character, and there is a lot of people who are who are rooting for you, for your family. The the uh, the GoFundMe thing has been set up. There is a link to, to that over on our Facebook page. You just look for Klaus and Q Show. There is a link to his GoFundMe page there. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we move on to? this month's topic because like I said we have a lot of <laughs> ground to to cover a big announcement is coming at the end of the show here tonight I'm excited about that but before we we, we move forward is there anything else you want to say uh, I just want to comment on that uh the news you know we all watch the news and we all see all the the negative stuff that's on there 
And the first thing that really came to my mind when the uh, newscaster came up to, to me and asked me if I wanted to do the interview, and uh, I know a lot of people say, no, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to give you all any ratings or anything like that, but uh, <laughs> that was, that wouldn't be my approach too. You, just, you want me to be on your area, you know? No, I get it. Well, you know, I say, you know, I, I gotta shine a little bit of light on what's going on. Uh, a lot of people see the glass half empty. Some people see it half full. I see it as refillable. <laughs> so that's the way I always see things, and I, I feel like I have to pretty much put that out there on the news. Hopefully, it inspired somebody, and I'm glad to hear that uh, my co-host and and uh, and Joe, the man, <laughs> was inspired. Listen, from, uh, brother, it <laughs> it it resonated through the screen. You know what I mean? It really, really did. And I'm just like, this guy is absolutely re remarkable, and we're very, you know, number one, first and foremost, we're certainly happy that you guys are safe. You know, that's what's most important here. Um, and that's that's why we're doing this, man, because of that level of optimism and positivity. Now, as I say yep. that, here comes the the hard segue. T tonight's topic challenges that because mm -hmm. it all depends on how you go about things. It all depends on what your mindset is. But it, there there's an aspect of our individuality and how we communicate. See, there's that thing again, Q. It all comes back down to communication. Mm -hmm. um, listen, we are human beings. We are filled with, with different emotions, all kinds of different thoughts, fears, concerns, I, everything under the sun. So eventually things are going to, to butt heads. People are going to butt heads with your spouse, with your best friend, with a coworker, with your boss, whoever. But when is the time to actually pick your battles in terms of how much time are you going to invest in a conversation which, by and large, we all know, let's be honest here, can and oftentimes leads to arguments. Now, yep. um, how many times have you, or you, Q, for, you know, more specifically, um, you get into a conversation, there is a disagreement, it can turn into an argument, and when it's all said and done, you've wasted, not wasted, but you've spent the last half hour, 45 minutes, sometimes an entire day or weekend, <laughs> and you look back on it and you're like, what was the point? Why did I invest that much time into this topic when by and large we're at the same spot that we were, there's no mm -hmm. resolution, or there's still that lack of closure, I guess, you know, and it, 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 it makes you wonder, why did I go down this road? Right. Versus right. there are times and topics that you probably should have put more time and effort in to make your point known, mm -hmm. but you didn't for whatever reason, and it becomes a multiple layer problem. Now, have you, I'm sure you're a human being, you, you interact with people all the time, Certainly you have come across these situations where you're like, man, I really need to learn to pick my battles better, right? Absolutely, and that, that's, that's gonna come to your maturity level as well on how to not only handle each and every battle, conversation, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, but also to know when to step out, step away, get away, some, there's some conversations you got to run fast from. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and that, th that's something that you kind of learn throughout time. And I, I, cause I don't expect somebody who, uh, who, who, who may not be experienced at, uh, you know, that type of, in, in, in like conversating, conversating with uh, different people, family members, whoever it may be, and actually knowing when you should get in or get out. If you're not at that mature, level to uh, actually know what to do in those situations, then that's m maybe you need to make sure you are mature. You got to check your maturity level. You got to actually grow up a little bit because everybody around you that's talking to you and you're trying, you're trying to find out, should I continue this conversation? Should I continue this battle, this argument? You're going to be in a circle that's going to drive you dizzy and you're going to start spiraling and, and that's not good for your mental state 
some of the people that you're conversating with because if there's no end game, then what's the point? Right. Just like you were just saying, there's no end game. There's got to be an end game to these conversations. Right. Remember that everything, if there's not a fact behind it, everything is opinionated. So sometimes we're arguing over opinions. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and, and I always say, like, if I have my opinion on a certain topic and the person that I'm arguing with has a different opinion, then who am I to go against your opinion because that's yours? That's your opinion. There's battles that we have to know we should not take part in. We should not be going around and around in a circle. But there's also battles that you shouldn't resist because, you know, some conversating is still important. Communication is important. And, but if it leads to an argument, then, you know, you got to see where you're at. But communication is very important because you can actually grow in the midst of communication. A lot of people don't realize that they can actually get stronger in that area. So it's important to actually know where you are in your maturity level. That is the key point. You, the, the maturity level is going to be ultimately the deciding factor as to how you go about this, at least from my point of view, at my, my perspective. And I'm not trying to sit here and, su and suggest that I'm more mature than this person or that person or, or whatever. That's not what I'm here for. I know what I want, right. you know what I mean? Like I know what points I'm trying to make and I know how to execute them by and large. You know, sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to figure out how I want to word it mm -hmm. because that is a very crucial part in the deterioration of a conversation. Right, you know what right. I mean? Because if, if you're just spouting off at the mouth just for the sake of hearing yourself talk, you're getting absolutely nowhere. There is no resolution. And, and more often than not, you're escalating the, the situation 10 times worse right, than, than yeah. it has to be. Now, this is where a lot of my experiences come into play is that lack of fundamental ma maturity because people want to engage in any type of conversation good or bad just because they want to feel involved yeah and if in this day and age you know as well as i do a controversy is what creates clicks right oh, because yeah. if if something is deemed controversial or there's a degree of negativity for whatever reason our society has embraced that over the things that are the good parts of life because for whatever reason it's been you know tagged with a stigma that it's less than it's cool to be bad and it's ridiculous to be good well i don't subscribe to that philosophy and when somebody is trying to coax me into their drama <laughs> right trying to coax me into their situations their battles their arguments number one and I'm just going to say this, and anybody who knows me on a personal level will attest to this, I am the last person you want involved in your drama. I absolutely have zero tolerance for it at this point in my life. If you are bringing me a bunch of crap that by and large has no bearing on my life, my well-being, or that of my family or my closest friends, I have no time for you. I am choosing not to embark That's right. in that battle. More people need to do that, right? Oh, because yeah. let's put the ego aside, Q. I mean, we've talked about it on several different, I'm getting fired up about this. <laughs> um, we've talked about it so many times is, is, is our level of, of our, we got to get our egos in check. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what it is. People that try to entice you into an argument that has no bearing on your life or whatever, either good or bad, they just need to be a part. They, there's something about you that they need to hitch their wagon to, right? Yeah. Because they see something in you or they see the attention that you're getting or they hear the adulation that is attached to your name. Mm -hmm. They want to be a part of that because they they can't do it on their own or they won't do it on their own because it would have to, you know, take some work and effort and by that, jeez. You, like <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, I got to remember this is a PG show here. 
And but I mean, how how much of that is ego driven? You know what I mean? For them, for those people to try to to get you involved in their their particular brand of drama or mm-hmm. controversy, they they need to be associated with you. How much of that is driven by the ego? Deep oh, it's definitely driven. But uh, pretty much, <laughs> it, it is very selfish. I'm gonna use the word selfish because when you are trying to drive other people through what you are going through or what you want to go through, because uh, some people love the drama that they're going through. There's a lot of people that can end some of the drama that they're going through, but they won't allow it to end. So they want to drag other people in. They want to drag you through the weeds and all that stuff. And it's, it's pretty much selfishness that uh, it's like me first. I'm thinking about me. I want you to think about me too, mm-hmm. because that's how I'm going to insert me into your life. Right. With my drama, so that's how it, it, it's 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 like a starting a wildfire. I know about fires. It's like starting <laughs> a wildfire. <laughs> one spark, one spark starts that wildfire. Look at what's going on on the, on, on the West Coast with all with, with with all the wildfires that's that's going out of control. One spark, I'm telling you, like so. It, that's how people use their drama. One little spark. And they, they get you fired up, and then all of a sudden you're in it with them. And before you know it, they're dragging all your, everybody your that you're connected yeah. with in there. And it's, it's, just, it's just a big mess. There's some people that you just, and we talked about this before when we were talking about people. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people just, you just got to disconnect from, you know, because they want you to be in their misery because they think about themselves while they're in their own misery, and they want you in it. Yes, it, it's, it's always them first, me first. If you're singing that song, me, 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 that's, if that's you 24-7, then, I mean, we're, what are we doing? I got me on my mind. <laughs> A lot of people think of themselves first. And it, it, you got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of yourself. But life is very important to have the right relationships. And if you cannot have a noble conversation, a noble, we can, we can have friendly arguments. I mean, we can have arguments about wrestling, you know, mm-hmm. and not try to beat each other up at the end of the conversation. Right. And uh, start putting drama on each other. I mean, we can do that. It's, it goes back to that maturity level. So, if, I mean, if you're... Not mature, you think about yourself. Look at my kids. I mean, I, and I, I, want to th- I want to talk about kids real quick. What do kids do when they first come out of the womb? They're crying because they're thinking about what they are going through. They just enter into this world, and they're crying. They want to be fed. They want, they want this. They want that. Some adults are acting just like that. <laughs> true story. It's absolutely true story. You know, you can you can break this down, you know, picking your battles with just about every different layer of correspondence that you go through in your in your life. Like your the way you correspond with your parents is going to be different than the way you correspond with your boss. Uh, well, unless you work for your parents, I guess. Um, right. Y- you know that con- those kinds, those types of conversations are going to be different than the ones that you have with your buddies or with your with your teammates or with your significant other. Every layer of that, there is a different opportunity. It presents, you know, the all of these different chances to embark in less than awesome conversations, right. and you got to sit there and you got to pick and choose um, which road you're going to go down. Now with when you talk about a professional environment, you're kind of walking a fine line there, all depending on the temperament, and it goes back to the maturity of the people that are in a supervisory or manager role. Um, you know, even though they have that title, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what they are because they couldn't manage their way out of a wet paper bag, but you know, most <laughs> most of the time. But you got But you have to really. Pick and choose what your what your battles are going to be with these people because at the end of the day they have a, a tremendous you know say in your employment. 
Right, and your right. ability to provide for yourself, for your family. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, they, they know they have that power in their jobs, in their roles, and they will use that to manipulate or to, or to man manipulate the, the person, the employee, the situation itself. Right, right. Um, you know, how many times have, where we work, you know what I mean? How many times have we had to s sit there and bite our tongues because there's an individual that's trying to tell us how to do our, our specific jobs who have never put on a pair of gloves and oh. never grab a drill or a part of, of any sort, you know what I mean? But, right, but right. because you went to college and you have a cool little you know clipboard with a bunch of stickers on it, that makes you think that you know how to do my job when by and large you absolutely could not lace my shoes. Um, so you, you sit there and you really have to make a conscious effort. I mean, at least I do. Like there are times where I'm like, is this the day that I'm I'm going to light this dude up in front of, in front of everybody? You know, is this worth it? Is the end game going to be worth it? Like I make a conscious effort. Like I have a pretty good idea what it, what the consequences of my actions would be. Is it worth going down that road? Will I get any sort of satisfaction and or closure? Um, in, if I embark on the road of ripping this dude's head off verbally speaking, of course, <laughs> you know, in what could be deemed yeah. an unprofessional environment. Right, right. You know, so that's where the the maturity level comes in too, right? Because oh, it's absolutely. not just the person that you're talking to, it's it's within yourself too, right? Right. Sometimes you gotta think before you speak. <laughs> and if you if you let that uh those lips get ahead of your 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 mind then you might get in trouble. I mean I had different scenarios being at the at the plant for going on 11 years. I had a couple of run-ins in my early days that I look back on. I said, man, I could have lost my job if I would have, if, if, I, I could have, it could have got out of hand, you know. There's been times where, you know, I've been challenged by, you know, the managers or a supervisor who might think they know how to do my job better than me. You know what, it's, it's, and it goes back to maturity, you have to know how to handle people who are who may be abusive of power, who may be pretty much in over their head. They might not even know what they're doing in their role. Right. You know, so you have to know how to handle those situations. And sometimes you just gotta learn to just be quiet sometimes. And it's not easy and that's not the popular answer. I understand that because everybody wants to kill their boss. <laughs> <laughs> now just even gotta be real, let's be transparent here. <coughs> There's a lot of people that don't like their boss, no matter who it is. But uh, you have to be professional in a professional environment. That is very important because that's, it's, it's not only, because it speaks volume about yourself, you, got, you have to carry yourself better than what you might want to do, you know, because we have a lot of desires that we want to do, but you start going by desires, then you're not, you're not going to be carrying yourself right. So uh, you have to take the smart road. Sometimes you got to take the high road. There's times where I, I had to be quiet when I felt like words need to be spoken. Now, but there's a, there, there's a way to, to, to uh, separate that from actually being a doormat. Mm -hmm. Don't be a doormat. Don't let people just walk all over you because you want to take the high road. There's going to be times, and that's yeah, so much with this maturity thing. Uh, there's going to be times where you have to speak up because people are not going to be able to take you serious if you're not going to be able to speak up when they're picking on you. Yeah. Because there's people going to pick on you. There's going to be managers and supervisors that may pick on you. Friends. A lot of people are going to pick on you throughout life. You have to know when to speak and when to be silent. So let me, and I, I, I put this on Facebook uh, maybe, uh, I think maybe two years ago or something like that. If, if words, well, let me see, let me word it right. If words approve upon the silence, that's when you speak. But if the silence is important, 
and words should not be involved in, learn to be quiet. But you have to be mature to really know the difference. That's it. They have to actually put put some effort in it. And a lot of people act on raw emotion. Oh, Real man. time, raw emotion, whatever they're feeling on the inside, that's what's coming out. Yeah. There is no filter. You know, and <clears throat> I, I've made no bones about the fact that I am the polar opposite of that. Like, I... If, if I don't know exactly what I'm going to say, like I know how I feel in that moment, but I sit there and I take, I take the time to wonder, you know, am I justified in how I'm feeling or is this a blow to my ego that by and large is, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. It just, it was a blow to the ego. Um, now, this is the part, at least for a lot of people, I feel like, when you are picking and choosing your battles, the most incredible and most profound quote-unquote battlefield that you will ever have any kind of dealings with is the one at home, specifically with your significant other, your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Um, oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, dude, listen. <laughs> This, this is the road that makes or breaks a lot of relationships because it boils down to this. Like, I thought about this when I said this is what, what we're going to talk about on the show here. Like, I started thinking about all kinds of different scenarios. I've thought about things that I have encountered over the course of my life, you know, from, you know, junior high school up until now. You know, and I think back on the, on the different conversations that I've had, arguments or things of this nature where I didn't pick and choose my battles very wisely because there was the fear at that time of, geez, I, I don't want them to get upset and, you know, if worst case, break up with me or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I grew up and I realized that if how I feel about things is such a huge issue with the person that I'm supposed to be spending my life with or part of my life with or I'm spending a significant amount of, of time with, if how I feel about things is a detriment, then what in the hell are we doing? Right. You know, um, that's not to say that there's not going to be arguments and disagreements and misunderstandings and things of this nature. There is. That, that's just part of being in a relationship, at least one that means anything to you. Um, but you, you know, you, n n number one, you got to read the room, okay? Mm -hmm. You've got to get a temperature for what kind of day did my significant other have? What kind of mindset is she in? What, oh, what kind yeah. of mood is she in? What is she dealing with? I And that's it. Cute. That I, I just nailed it. People oh. don't take the time to try to figure out what the other person is going through or dealing with that we may or may not know. We are just going solely on our own impulses, our own feelings and things of this nature without taking in, into, into consideration what else is happening on the other side of the equation, right? Mm -hmm. That's got to be part of it, correct? Oh, man, that's a big part of it. I just had this conversation... I don't even remember who I was talking to, but I, was, I just had this conversation with somebody else about not understanding the other one, you know, not understanding people. Uh, somebody asked me about a, I'm not, I'm not going to name drop anybody, but uh, somebody was asking me about a specific person who uh, irritates them and why they don't irritate me. <laughs> and I, I, I said it just as clear, like, you know, you got to understand that person. Everybody is not the same. If everybody was the same, it would be very boring, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are all diverse, different people with different upbringings, different days. I mean, different weeks. We have all kind of different things going on. Somebody woke up on the wrong side of the bed. You woke up on the right side of the bed. So there's your disagreement right there. Right. But uh, if you understand people <laughs> and that everybody is not like you, that's the hard part because a lot of people see, try to see themselves out of somebody else. And when you're not doing what they want you to do or you want them to do, then there's a problem. There, you, we have to understand that people are all different and we all have different circumstances. I mean, we were born in different cities. We came up in different 
in pretty much different worlds. I mean, things are different with so many people. And if you don't understand that, then you're going to be arguing with everybody. Right. You know, it's, and, and those are going to be battles that you decide to choose because you don't understand who they are. You know, I'm not saying you have to sit down and have an interview with the person and really say, oh, where, where were you born? Were you born at a St. Clinton Hospital? Or You don't have to do all of that. It's just understanding that they're not you. Mm -hmm. And that's the simple part is just understanding that they're not you. They have different shoes on. They have different circumstances. That's, that goes with everybody. So I don't allow people to get to me because I understand that they're different. You know, that's who they are. You know, I, I, I can't make them be somebody else. But you got to be the best version of you, you know. <laughs> Ultimately, you're the only one that you have control over. That's it. Un unless you're a narcissist and try to you know, control other people because there's a serious lack of something happening in your world. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> right. Um, I, the I guess the, the way I approach this, especially when you're dealing with your, your significant others and you know, you're going to disagree, you're going to have arguments and things of this nature, but you got to really step back and prioritize things. At least for me, that's what I do. Like I look at the grand scheme of life and where I want to go and what I want for my family and things of this nature. Like I need, I, I approach every day, how can I be the best version of myself? What didn't go right yesterday that I can approve on here today? Yep. You know, that's a big part of the maturity level. You know, a lot of people don't do that because they have to admit that they were wrong. And a lot of people's egos just do not have that part made up in them. And that's unfortunate. And mm -hmm. I feel like that if they did, then they probably wouldn't have nearly as much conflict in their lives. Now, when you start picking and choosing, like I am not going to embark into a conversation, a heated one, because the wrong kind of bread was bought, or I don't like Kogel hot dogs, I like ballparks, you know what I mean? Right. Because in the grand scheme of things, yeah, there may be a degree of disappointment if you were really having a hankering for that ballpark hot dog and your significant <laughs> other brought you home, you know, Kogels. You ain't starving, That's you right. know what I mean? <laughs> if, you know, maybe your significant other bought the Kogels because here's a concept, for once, that's what she wanted, or that's what he wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's you. It, it can't be one person ruling the roost. At least in my opinion, if you are going to have a successful, strong, meaningful re relationship, it's got to be a 50-50 thing. It's got to be two working as one, not one working for the two. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. I mean, put bring your all we both need to bring our all <laughs> into right. this. I mean, uh, and oh man, as long as it's not S-Bar. I don't like S-Bar hot dogs. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> side note, just a little side note. Sidebar, love but, it. But uh, uh, you know, really, and I always say, you know, I'm gonna bring 100%. Can you bring 100%? If we both bring, that's 200% we're bringing. Right there, that's all of me, all of you. If we can put all of that together, then, I mean, there's going to be different differences, you know, there's going to always be differences, but it's how you handle those differences, really, because you're not always going to see eye to eye on things. Right. And you got to learn how to see things out of her eyes or his eyes, you know, out of the other's, other's eyes. Uh, and that's really a good way to put a team together, because that's what we are. We're supposed to be a team. We're supposed to be able to handle each and every situation together. Like my wife, she's a part of me, and I'm a part of her. And you know, 10 years in, we're still learning each other. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, there's some things that I'm still finding out. I mean, and there's things she's finding out about me. Not bad, but hopefully. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but something that you guys didn't know before then. Yeah, you know? we're still learning each other. I mean, we had a whole life before we even got married. Right. So, I mean, all I can relate <coughs> to that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep learning each other. I mean, bring your hundred, bring your hundred to the party. I'm telling you, just bring your hundred to the party. Don't don't leave no room for anybody else to get in because there's always going to be interferences from outside forces trying to get into your relationship, mm -hmm. and that's the dangerous part. That's where a lot of friction can be. Uh, <laughs> 
can can happen, you know. Right. Even close ones. I mean, there's no 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 disrespect to anybody out there, but I, there's there, there's family members that you can't allow to get deep into your relationship with uh with your spouse or girlfriend or whatever. You got to keep certain people out. It's okay to have people in, but you got to keep certain people out. You guys need to be number one and number one. Yeah. You know, I think um, as we put a bow on this particular s segment, I think the the easiest way to you know kind of figure out internally as we embark on these different s scenarios where you're forced to choose, you know, is this a battle I'm going, I'm going to choose, you know, is this the one that I'm going to invest my time in? If it's, if you feel like that the end result is going to be some sort of bearing on your overall happiness or well-being as an individual, then by all means, yes, that is the time that you pick that battle to, to embark on. But if it's something that is like su superficial or, or, in the grand scheme of things, isn't going to have a tremendous bearing on your level of happiness or well-being, then by and large, I mean, you can talk about it, but I wouldn't be putting a whole lot of stock into whether or not, you know, you're going to have y yellow walls or blue walls in the living room. Right, There's right. got to be a compromise, you know yeah. what I mean? It's not, it's not worth breaking up over. It's not worth throwing crap over. It's not worth any of that because okay you have your opinion they have theirs and let's find the happy medium in this right you know if there absolutely is no happy medium and you are just you both are just so passionate about your particular you know preference of wall color then i, I mean <laughs> if that's what is the is the determining factor on whether or not you continue your relationship well i guess that's on you and to you that was a battle worth picking on mm -hmm. i yeah. don't T to me, it's a little bit more deeper than that, right? Yeah, yeah. I always say, never make a a permanent decision from a temporary circumstance. Yep. I mean, if if it's something as shallow as wall color, or what hot dog <laughs> I bought, you know, if it's something shallow like that, you know, me and my wife, I have fun with arguments, and she. She's probably laughing on the other, other side of the screen right now, hopefully. But uh, I have fun with arguments. If we arguing about something shallow like that, it's usually usually her arguing with that me, and then I'll come back with, uh, with something pretty much clever that'll make her laugh. Right. And uh, that's how we handle it. That's how I handle it, and it shuts everything down. You have to know how to shut down those shallow moments, those things that could turn into something deep. Right. You know, because that wall color... That argument can get very deep, very quick, you know, mm -hmm. and it can take a day before you say, I don't even want to be with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that quick from a conversation about wall colors and hot dogs. So you have to know what battle to pick and what battle to actually shut down and know how to shut it down. Yeah, that will probably be in everybody's best interest. I mean, just take a moment and put some thought into it before you just go flying right out of the gate, you know, because, you know, you don't want you don't want to be looking back on this particular installment and be like, probably shouldn't have gone that route with that, right? <laughs> so um, all kinds of different scenarios and, and situations. Obviously, it's going to be in individualized, but I think, I think it boils back down to, is it going to have a long-term effect on your overall happiness and or well-being as an individual? I think if you keep that at, at, at the forefront, you will, by and large, hopefully, be able to pick and choose your battles a little bit more wisely. Uh, with that, we are going to run a quick timeout. We'll be back here in about 90 seconds with a pretty big announcement that I'm excited to make and kind of catch back up and bring the show uh, to a close here. So, so, so stick around. More of the Klaus and Q show is right after this. Hold on to your hats. The big one is coming to Friendship Park on Friday, August 5th from 5 to 9 p.m. Orient Township brings you the 18th annual Big Rig Gig Spectacular. See trucks, tractors, diggers, dozers, buckets, and backloaders side by side. Load up the entire family to see fire trucks and police vehicles. 
One night only. One night only. One night only. Come early, stay late for the insanity, and don't forget your camera. Admission and parking is free, free, free to the public. That's Friday, August 5th, Friendship Park, Big Rig Game. ON TV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10 week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. And then he says, wrecked them and damn near killed them. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hey. Hey, oh. welcome back welcome to back. the Klaus and Q Show. We're live here from the ON TV studio in Lake Orion, Michigan. I'm Jason Klaus being joined by Claudel Edwards. We've had a pretty animated conversation yes. here on this on this particular episode, picking and choosing your battles. And um, you know, you know, first and foremost, we we opened up the show. If you're joining us late, we, we opened up the show with Q. He kind of talked about um, the particular setback that he and his family have had to endure. Obviously, your guys are doing well, and that's fantastic. We're happy to hear that. Um, listen, if you haven't already, you need to check out the official online store of the PFC Podcast Network over at CafePress.com. You're going to find all kinds of cool new Klaus and Q merchandise. All of that, all of that information is on our website at klaustotheheart.net. Now, Q, I realize that this is the Klaus and Q show, um, but this is under the the PFC Podcast Network umbrella. Okay, um, I have a pretty big announcement that I'm very excited to make, especially, and I wanted it to happen here tonight. I, you know, I could have gone on Facebook Live. I could have done a number of different things, but I really wanted to make this announcement here tonight on ONTV. Now, anybody who knows me knows on, you know, I am very much in the entertainment side of things. Like I spent almost 30 years as a professional wrestler, both as a performer and a promoter of, of, of the company itself. So being in the public eye for the majority of my life has not been anything new to me. Now, having made the transition from the wrestling business to this podcasting, and then we have this amazing opportunity on ONTV once a month. We got more information about that here shortly. Um, I have always wanted to be in the public eye in some way, shape, or form. Not just because I want people to like me or whatever, because I wanted, I've wanted, i always wanted to make a difference. I've wanted to make an impact. And I feel like after all of those years I have spent in a wrestling ring, like it, in a weird way, has helped shape and form and mold me into the version you see now, the, the motivational speaking and things of this nature. While I no longer perform inside a professional wrestling ring, I have now made the transition to performing in a public realm on stage. I've done two stage shows so far. We did the Fisher Hall in Frankenmuth and the Pix Theater in Lapeer. Well, I'm very happy and honored to be able to announce that I can add Oxford, Michigan to that list because on Friday night, September the 9th, I will be appearing live at the Legacy Center, uh, more specifically the 925 Barn Kitchen Event Center inside the, the Legacy Center. Great big you know, a building across M24 from, from Meyer. Um, it happens on September the 9th, it starts at 8 p.m., and it is going to be, full disclosure, a mature rated show. This is going to be more directed towards adults. And I am very, very excited. I'm excited to get back on stage. I'm excited about, you know, c coming to Oxford, because Oxford and, and the Lake Orion area, obviously, very close in proximity. Um, stemming on what we do here, obviously is going to resonate and I'm very, very much looking forward to being a part of this and I hope you will make your plans to join me on that night. 
I'm not exact. I haven't tied down the topic yet, Q. But oh. uh, make no mistake about it. You know, this is going to be something that gets hammered home because, like I said, the previous two shows were more. I mean, more of a PG-14. You know, you were you could bring the kids, but they could probably hear some stuff that, <laughs> by and large, you may not want to. This this is intended for 18 and over, um, straight up. So. Uh, I'm going to come, I'm going to uh, have a conversation of sorts and how we can in some way, sh shape or form be better versions of ourselves and you can find out all of our information across our platforms, um, klaustotheheart.net which is our official website or you can find Klaus to the Heart on Facebook and we'll have links on the Klaus and Q page and, and all, all over. So spread the word, make your plans, join me in Oxford, Michigan at the 925 Kitchen and or Bar and Kitchen Event Center inside the Legacy Center. Uh, very much lo looking forward to that. Oh, so am I. I was, I was actually in attendance for the uh, Pix Theater uh, show, the last one. The last one, I actually brought the kids. Yeah, you did. I brought the kids, you know. Uh, <laughs> Probably want to keep them home for want to keep one. them home for this one. <laughs> but uh, I brought the kids to the last one, I'm, and let me tell you, this man right here, he, the heart that he has, and, and I love that he calls it Klaus to the heart, because this man comes from the heart when he speaks, and uh, I, I believe that every word that's going to be spoken is something that you can hang your hat on. It's going to be something that. It's really going to be, uh, it's going to be encouraging. It's going to help you become better in your endeavors, you know. So uh, I, I always say congratulations to, uh, this, is, this is my buddy right here, Jason Klaus. One of the first guys that I met once we went down to the first, to the, uh, the Trim One shop, he was on, we were on the same job yeah. <laughs> on different shifts. But, uh, you know, just come out and support. It's always good that, uh, you know, we support people that we uh, know that are real. And he is definitely real. He keeps it real. I mean, this is as authentic as you can get. So I believe that we all are going to be able to have something to take away from that show. Well, I certainly appreciate that, man. Those are very kind words. And I can't say enough about you. Uh, you know, we, we, we've discussed my, my level of respect and admiration for, for you. So f to, to sit here and, and hear that just means the world to me. And uh, uh, I also need to say, uh, well, first and foremost, as far as the show goes, again, it's, um, it starts at 8 p.m. Doors will open at 7.45. There's going to be food. There's, you know, you'll have the opportunity to go back and forth between the event center and the bar and kitchen part. You know, drinks and food and things of that nature will be available as well as Klaus to the Heart merchandise. Got to throw in my, oh, yeah. my gimmicks in there, right? Oh, yeah. But listen, uh, I need to give a quick shout out before we move on to our final piece of business here tonight. This show that I'm going to do in Oxford, this would not have happened without the driving force that keeps, that keeps things on the rails for me. Uh, really, you know, it's, it's her pushing me that really... Um, keeps my eyes on the prize in, in terms of what my goals, my dreams, my aspirations are. And she w was a huge, huge factor behind the scenes in, in the Pix th Theater sh uh, show. Um, Oxford is no exception, and I want to say thank you to uh, my very special lady, Brittany, for, for you know, being there for inspiring me for keeping me on on track to pushing me to motivating me like that wouldn't happen with with, with without her all right she pushed for this show absolutely you know it was <laughs> you know bringing q on on a re regular basis was her idea and it has spawned into the klaus and q show speaking of klaus and q show what a great segue oh, that was awesome listen <laughs> next month is our big one now, we alluded to, to this um, a few months back that we were going to do s something big here in the summer months. Well, on Friday night, August the 12th, beginning at 6 p.m. live here from the ON TV studio, we are going to do our next installment of the Klaus and Q show. However, this one is going to be different. We are inviting you, our audience, our fans, to be a part of the studio audience for the first time ever we're going to have fans and you know friends and followers and and su supporters of the show 
here in the studio with us. There's going to be a Q&A session. They'll be able to, to embark and engage in the conversation during the course of the broadcast. And listen, I, I, Joe and I talked a little bit, um, uh, our, our director and, of course, huge su supporter of all of this, uh, Joe Johnson, if the weather cooperates, Q, we're taking the show outside. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We're, it's going to be a, a completely, hopefully the weather cooperates because, <laughs> listen, like I have worked in this building, this particular building, for a long time. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it's been close to, to a decade. Um, first, obviously, with MWO, but then, I mean, but believe it or not, like where we are right now, there used to be a wrestling ring in here once a month. Ooh. And like there were fans in here and things of this nature. So I mean, my my ties with this building and with ONTV run very, very deep. And like I, that does not get lost on me at all. Um, so to be able to extend this this invitation to you, our fans, the ones who tune in, each and every time we, we do this, this is our way of saying thank you and for you to be a part of the show. Um, going into this, Q, what's, what's your thoughts on, on this? Excitement. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, you know, it's, it's always good to be amongst, you know, people that, that want to be with us, you know, who, you know, supporters, family, whoever. I mean, we invite you all to come out. Uh, our, our, is it first come, first serve? I, yeah, I mean, there is a, a limited amount of space in the, in the studio here, obviously. Um, so we're going to have to kind of monitor that. But, you know, the cool thing about this building is even if, you know, if we were to fill up the, the studio with the allotted amount of people that, that we have in here, you know, you can go, there is like a little lobby here in, in the building and you can actually watch on the screens what's happening in, yeah. in the studio. And I realize that that's not an ideal situation, but it also provides them an opportunity because if they're out there and they have a question, there's right. nothing that says that they, that they can't you know, come in here and talk on the microphone and ask their questions and we will address that. Now, we're not exactly sure exactly you know, what the topic is going to be yet. In fact, if there is something that you would be interested in hearing, not just on the August 12th show, but all of our, fu all of our future shows, by all means, send us a DM on the Klaus and Q show uh, Facebook page. Yes. Uh, Q and I will, will check it out. If it's something that we think is going to resonate with the majority of our audience, absolutely. We will be happy to address it. We should actually probably do like, a, you know, ask us anything type, type of, yeah, of episode. Yeah. So go ahead, head over to the Klaus and Q show Facebook page. I don't care what it is. You have a question, you have a comment, we will compile them when we have enough to occupy a segment or maybe a, an entire ep, you know, episode. We will um, open the mailbag, as it were. Um, that could be kind of cool I too. I actually like that. Yeah. We need to get we, <laughs> we need to get people. We want them to feel involved. Right? Yes. Because yes. how you know I like I've that. gotten feedback and I, and I know you have too that what we do, in some regards resonates with people yeah you know they may be you know dealing with something that in their minds at the time has been absolutely astronomical they can't overcome it but something that you said or something that i said or right, or right. something registered with them it resonated with them it allowed them to look at a different way and the next thing you know there's a whole new world of possibility and they have overcome that challenge, overcome that setback. Yep. So we, look, we realize we are in a very unique si situation to where we have the ability to reach out to a lot of people. Oh yeah. And that does not get lost on us. Oh yeah. And uh, like we sit, you know, consciously, you know, individually and together, um, what can we do that is going to help people, that's going to motivate people, that's going to inspire people get away from all the negativity you know we've t it's a reoccurring theme on here not just on the show but in life in life in general right right oh yeah oh yeah so you need you always need some uh you need good people so if you take anything away from the what we're saying and uh pretty much on all the shows 
all our all the platforms that we have. Uh, I mean, and you want to ask a question, something that you're dealing with personally. I mean, we we keep it we'll keep it confidential if you want us to, or if you want us to, you know, read something on the air. I mean, there's going to be different ways to get everyone who wants to be involved to get involved. I mean, this is an opportunity I believe is going to grow us closer as a community mm -hmm. and uh, I believe it's much needed because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people speaking negative and a lot of people are gravitating to it because it's popular. We need more people to speak positive words and we need that to become a little bit more popular and if we can do anything in that area to really uh, uh, extend the popularity level of, in, of uh, you know positive speaking, motivational speaking, we are here and we want you guys to be involved with us. Could not have said it better and um, you know we're very much looking forward to this. We're looking forward to August 12th to be a part of this show you know with with the ones who support us, you know what I mean? And, yep. you, and you nailed it perfectly. I mean, you can have your selfies, you can have your autographs. The only things that you can't have is either of our phone numbers were happily taken. Yeah. Now, um, sorry guys, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Look, we'll take all all the selfies with it you want, and you can wh whatever. But you know, there there is a line, right? So, <laughs> yeah. um, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Like I was very much lo looking forward to tonight because we haven't seen each other in person in quite some time. It's right. been, um, well, obviously since the last time we were on the air here, but like we haven't seen each other in our normal work environment in a couple of months. And um, right. so it's it was good to sit here tonight with you and catch up, especially after everything that you guys have, have been through. And uh, listen, we appreciate all of you tuning in here um, on this episode of the Klaus and Q Show. And you know, again, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything of the sort, send us a direct message to the Klaus and Q Show page on Facebook or klaustotheheart.net where you will find all of our other contact information. For Quadell Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. Be awesome to yourselves and to each other. Go out and make a positive difference in somebody's day. With that, we'll see you on August 12th, live, right here, on the Klaus and Q Show, exclusively on Orion Neighborhood Television.